What's up guys, in this video, I wanna show you one of the simple tricks that I used to evaluate our trigonometric functions. Now, this came about when I was teaching my Algebra 2 and why my Algebra 2 students need to know about evaluating trigonometric functions. That is a video for another day. The problem that I had was I had to teach trigonometric functions or evaluating trigonometric functions using this unit circle within a couple of days. Now when I teach pre-calculus, that's something that I spend multiple days working on with the students to have them really understand. So what I wanted to do was just kind of give you a quick little trick that I taught my Algebra 2 students, so therefore when they do get the test and they need to figure out these trigonometric functions, they can do something easily without knowing everything that they need to know in a trigonometry pre-calculus or calculus class. So let's go ahead and get started with what they're going to look at. Okay, so here we have the unit circle on a xy grid. Now, what I did do is I did show my students where the coordinate points are on the unit circle, and I think for any student that needs to evaluate their trigonometric functions with the unit circle, need to understand the right triangles and need to understand where these points come from because they aren't points that just come out of nowhere. They come from our special right triangles when the hypotenuse is going to be equal to one, right? You can see from there, the hypotenuse is one. Right? And we have our angles. This is going to be the 30, 45, and 60 degree angle. Now, these coordinate points, I did show the students and I did talk to them about that, is this one's going to be square root of 3 over 2, square root of 2 over 2, and 1 half comma square root of 3 over 2. We talked about how if we look at this on terms of a triangle, that this could be square root of 3 over 2, and this would be 1 half. And therefore, you could use your opposite over adjacent, right? So we know that if we're given our angle, theta, that sine of theta represents the y coordinate, right? Because technically, if you take opposite over hypotenuse, 1 half over 1, that's just going to be 1 half, right? So that's going to represent the y coordinate, and cosine of theta is equal to the x coordinate. Then we only just focused on sine and cosine. And again, you could also refer to tangent as y over x. All right, but we're going to keep things fairly basic here. The point that we wanted to get into is when we're dealing with trigonometric functions using a right triangle, it's great to know the right quadrant. And we can also evaluate all of these by using triangles when we have that angle within the first quadrant. And the reason being is because all angles within the first quadrant is less than 90 degrees. The thing that got really interesting is what happens here when I have angles larger than 90 degrees. So we still have these points, right? These represent our angles. But what's starting to happen interesting is, what about when I have an angle over here? What about when I have an angle down here? Or an angle over here. Some typical things that we talk about, at least in pre-calculus, we look at using the reference angles and we look at using this idea of using the reference angle and then using the first quadrant. And I was like, that is going to be too confusing for my students. So what I told them, you need to know where these points came from. And we spent time understanding the triangle to develop that understanding. But then the next thing I wanted you to do was rather than trying to like memorize these angles, we talked about how to graph the angles, where these angles are. So let's look at some problems that we would develop with my students. So for instance, I could do, what is the cosine? of 150 degrees, what is the sine of 225 degrees, and what is the tangent here of, let's see, 300 degrees. We talked about how to graph the angles on the unit circle. We had our standard form. We're going in the positive direction. I think when students see this point and they get to this point and they say, all right, what is this? Or what is the cosine of that angle? We know cosine is x, but I don't know what this point is. Well, the one thing that really kind of struck me as very just a simplified approach is just kind of think like, here are our three major points. You can see that this point is just a reflection. That's all it is. So this coordinate point over here is just going to be a negative square root of 3 over 2 comma 1 half, right? Because as you reflect anything across the y-axis, your x value is going to turn negative or the opposite. So in this case, my x value is a negative square root of 3 over 2. Now let's go and take a look at the next graph. You can see here, this is a direct reflection about the origin of this point right over here. Basically what you're doing when you're reflecting about the origin is you're reflecting about the x and the y. So what is that doing to the coordinate point? That's negating the x-coordinate and negating the y-coordinate. So if I know that this is a reflection directly across from here, 225 degrees, I graph it and I say, oh, that's right in the middle. That's right in the middle. So therefore this coordinate point here is now just going to be a negative square root of 2 over 2 comma negative square root of 2 over 2. So therefore, the sine is going to equal a negative square root of 2 over 2. So you can just use reflections really easily just to understand, are you reflecting about the y-axis? Are you reflecting about the x-axis? 
or are you going to be reflecting about the origin? Now let's go and look at the last one here, which is going to be the tangent. And again, you can see this tangent here is a reflection directly across from the x-axis. So therefore, the only thing that's going to change, my coordinate point will be the same, but all I'm going to do is just reflect across the x-axis. So the important thing is, if you can understand how to graph your coordinate points and make sure that you understand the points in the first quadrant, then what you can do is you can easily use reflections about the axes as well as the origin to just negate the x and y terms. And as long as you understand your definitions of trigonometric functions, you can quickly evaluate the trigonometric functions using the unit circle. Hopefully that was helpful. If you want more examples of exactly what I just did in this video, go ahead and check out the playlist in my cards, as well as the video I have coming right up next. Cheers.